Starting with this week's video, there begins to be some content that I felt could not pass without comment, namely the pretty brazen misogyny displayed by James Bond. I want to talk about how this kind of portrayal affects our culture as a whole. Defined as hatred of, contempt for, or prejudice against women, from the Greek misogynes, woman hater, it seems like misogynist displays would be uncontroversially bad, just like any other evil attribute a character might portray. So how are these tendencies in our characters treated by themselves, others, and especially by the narrator? You will be pleased with your number two. She is very beautiful. She has black hair, blue eyes, and splendid, er, uh, protuberances, front and back. My assistant will thus be on hand in case your new radio breaks down. And occasionally at night, he added, with an exaggerated wink. Matisse is certainly a pig. The narrator goes along with it, but Matisse himself seems to mix this line of thinking with an equally broad egalitarianism. And she is a wireless expert, which makes her a perfect employee of Radio Stentor. She is as serious as you could wish. She speaks French like a native and knows her job backwards. Her cover's perfect, and I have arranged for her to team up with you quite smoothly. So, given this, one of our culture's highly celebrated and masculine characters is given the chance to respond. But of course, if he responded well, I might not be making this video. What the hell do they want to send me a woman for? Certainly not, sharing Matisse's egalitarian slant. At the close of the chapter, the narrator takes an opportunity to tell us more about James Bond's attitude towards women. He sighed. Women were for recreation. On a job, they got in the way, and one had to look out for them and take care of them. <sighs> the chapter leaves me as a reader with the distinct impression that the author agrees with this way of thinking, which does not bode well for the character's further development, or for the development of a mirror for him to see himself in. In fact, in future chapters, he continues to dig a hole. He was quite honest to himself about the hypocrisy of his attitude towards her. As a woman, he wanted to sleep with her, but only when the job had been done. What? As a woman, he wanted to sleep with her. What? The narrator does not help him out. Mon saw luck as a woman, to be softly wooed or brutally ravaged, never pandered to or pursued. What? Now I know the author agrees. His hatred of women is so complete that he uses it as an offhand analogy for something else he is trying to describe. So what is at the bottom of this? Where am I going? Am I calling for a boycott of everything related to Ian Fleming? Certainly that is what a knee-jerk reaction to this kind of content would lead me to. However, like with so many problems that are baked into our society, that course of action only leads to isolate the solution from the problem. James Bond is not just some book. It is a major source of remix in our culture. Nothing in the espionage genre can get by without making some sort of reference. Whole franchises have been built parodying James Bond directly. Even though I've never read the books before and had only seen one James Bond movie, I had personally encountered the character on a regular basis, woven throughout the culture I live in. To understand James Bond, who he is, and where he came from is in a small way to understand a part of our society itself. We need to stare pretty directly into this mirror until we are properly terrified. This book on its own is probably not especially dangerous, but culture builds, transforms, interprets, integrates. And this is an integrated component that desperately needs to be seen, and seen, and seen, and extinguished.